Amen. All right, here in Hebrews chapter number 6, I want to begin reading in verse number 1. Focus on the beginning portion of the chapter. The Bible reads, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Verse number 3, And this will we do if God permit. The title of the sermon this morning is Not Laying Again the Foundation. Not Laying Again the Foundation. I'm going to be preaching about the dangers of changing what you believe. More specifically, the dangers of changing what you believe all the time. Now here in this particular chapter, that's exactly what Paul is warning of. He, that's exactly what he is warning the, uh, uh, the, the recipient of the letter here of changing what they believe all the time. Look at what it says there in verse number 1. It, what particularly he's warning them of here. Verse number 1 it says this, Therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. He goes on further and says, Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of doctrine, of baptism, and so forth and so forth. Now I want you to notice there in the beginning of verse number 1, particularly what he is warning them about, about not laying the foundation of this again. What is he talking about? He says this, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Now what are things that are principles? What are they? They're foundations, right? They're basics, right? They're something that's very simple, right? So, what I'm going to be preaching about, I want you to go in your Bibles now to Ephesians chapter number 4. I'm going to be preaching about the importance of not changing your doctrine, but more specifically, not changing the foundation. Not changing the foundation. Now, when we look at the Bible, there are simpler teachings. There are simple doctrines in the Bible. There are deep things in the Bible. There are a lot of things that are hard to understand that people that have been saved for years, pastors will disagree on and they will differ on, right? But there are things in the Bible that are basics. There are things in the Bible that are very easy and very simple to understand. We're actually given a list of a few of those things right Right here in Hebrews chapter number 6, right? One of them is repentance, right? The subject of repentance. It talks about in faith toward God. That's a foundation, right? That's something that's a principal doctrine. That's not something that, you know, 10 years down the road we need to be debating or we need to be re going back and relaying that foundation, right? We as Christians, we need to be Christians that are interested in the truth, that we desire to know the truth. Oftentimes you'll bump into people you will meet people, you maybe went to church with people in the past, and you can just tell this person has no real interest in what the truth is. Sometimes it's just their own interest, personal interest that they have in the flesh that they are portraying on the scriptures. And every time they read some scripture, they try to twist it to talk about whatever that subject is. They, they read a passage and then they'll preach, you know, uh, maybe a short sermon like in a preaching class or something like that, and it'll, it'll, they'll somehow relate a totally unrelated subject to something they're just interested in, right? Or maybe they reject a doctrine, a very clear doctrine in the Bible, because it conflicts with their own personal interests. We as Christians, we need to be interested in what the truth is. And what is the truth? Jesus said, thy word is truth, right? The Bible, whatever the Bible truly teaches, the Bible was, was written by God. His word was written down by men and he spoke the words and those are divinely inspired. They're perfect words. God's word is truth. And, it, and there are things that the Bible teaches and there are things that the Bible does not teach. It, teach. There are things that, you know, that doctrines that people will stand up and preach and they think that's what the Bible is teaching, right? But in fact, they're, they're preaching error. They're preaching things that are false. So we need to find out what, it, what the Bible actually teaches on subjects, right? We need to be diligent. We need to study out the Bible and, and, and uh, find out what is truth. Zechariah chapter number 8 verse number 19 says this, Therefore, love the truth. We need to be Christians that love the truth. We need to love the truth no matter what. We need to love God's Word no matter what. Whether it bothers you, whether it hurts you, whether it offends you, you need to love the truth. You need to love what the Bible teaches. You need to love God's Word. And hey, you know, there are a lot of things in the Bible that are offensive. There are a lot of things in the Bible that I read when I was, you know, uh, just starting out, wanting to learn the Bible as a Christian, living my life, 
and it was very offensive to me and it was hard to swallow but you know what I did I got over it I figured out is this really what the Bible teaches and then I just accepted it and you know what happened over a period of time now I look back and I love those things now I look back and I just love whatever that teaching is right you always get over it. the things that offend you you can move past it right the only the only reason oftentimes when you get offended by the Word of God is because your heart's not right so if something is offending you from the Word of God it's usually that you have some sort of internal problem in receiving whatever this truth is that your heart is not right with God so we need to be Christians that love the truth and we need to be on a pursuit of truth we need to be studying the Bible and we need to be trying to figure out what does the Bible teach you know we should never be satisfied let me say this we should never be satisfied with the knowledge and the wisdom that we have of God's Word you should always be endeavoring to learn more to grow as a Christian to know more truths from the Bible do you think you understand every truth in the Bible of course not that's ridiculous you never will but you need to always be endeavoring to learn more and more and more truths that are that are found here in the Bible but just because we are on a pursuit of truth, you know, you oftentimes have people say this, say this line to you or something of this effect, right? They'll say, you know, you need to be open-minded. They'll say, hey, you need to be open-minded, right? You've heard people say that all the time? I've heard that so many, so many times, right? At the door, soul winning, right? You've heard it numerous times. You need to be open-minded. Now, let me say this. To, to a degree, I mean, in areas, that can be correct. In areas, that can be right. But once you have discovered truth, do you think it's wise to just continue to be open-minded in that area? Once you've discovered, hey, this is the truth. This is the truth. Do you think it's wise to be open-minded to other things? Let me ask everyone here in, in, in here uh, a quick question. Is anyone open-minded that 2 plus 2 equals 5? Raise your hand if you're open-minded about that. That that two plus. What if I'm trying to persuade you? Hey, you know, two plus two equals five. What if I brought in a mathematic mathematician and he and he has a dissertation that he's going to show you that he he, he discovered a new theory behind mathematics and he's going to prove to you before the end of this lecture. Hey, two plus two actually equals five. Is anyone in this room? I know I made that sound good, but is anyone in this room? stupid enough to say hey that's a lecture I want to sit through two plus two right 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 I you know that's expected no I'm just kidding two plus two equals four we all know that right two plus two equals four there's no question about that that's not something I'm not gonna go back and lay my relay my foundation of addition right that's I'm not gonna go back into mathematics and, 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 and restudy hey am I actually right that two plus two equals four maybe I'm wrong maybe you know I, I missed something there maybe there's some other you know tool that I need right that's ridiculous well Paul is 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 preaching the exact same thing here in the book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter number six there are basic things to the Christian life there are ba basic things to Christian doctrine to the Bible teachings very basic things that we need to learn once understand it and then we don't need to revisit that foundation again. Hey, you can grow in knowledge in those areas. But you don't need to go back and question whether or not that's true or not. We need to not be a Christian that's constantly relaying our foundation or that's constantly having to question what we believe in areas like that. So you are in Ephesians chapter number 4. Let me get there myself. I didn't, I didn't paste that particular verse. Ephesians chapter number 4 and it's uh, verse number... We'll read verse 13 first. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now I want you to notice something real quick because I'm going to show you consistency and we're going to go back to Hebrews 6 in just a moment. What is he speaking of here in verse number 13? That What is our objective? What are we growing towards, right? What is it? Anyone? Christ, the, it, it says specifically, it says unto a perfect man, right? I want you to notice that, that we need to be striving to be unto a perfect man, a complete man. Christ, we have an objective, right? Wants us to, to, to grow and to move on. That is the, the theme of verse number 13, right? From where you're at, we need to be growing. We need to be maturing, right? Look at verse number 14 now. That we henceforth, saying from here forward, that we henceforth be no more children. You notice that? Tossed to and fro 
and carried about with every wind of doctrine. And then it says it goes on by the slight of man, slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So verse number 14 he, he gives the admonition that we henceforth, saying here on out, here forward, we be no more children. That we don't be a child. What is a child? You know, uh, how is a child when it comes to beliefs? Are they, are they easy to, to manipulate? Is it easy to, to sit them down and change their beliefs on things? Of course, right? Because they're immature in mind. They're not disciplined, right? It's easy for them to just, you know, uh, uh, change what they believe on subjects, isn't it? You could sit down, and they're, and they're easy, like I said, specifically, like, and this is teaching, to deceive. You could sit down and deceive them very easily, right? He's saying, hey, I don't want you to be a child anymore. And how are children? They're tossed to and fro. They're not stable, are they? Would you consider your children's lives stable? Do you think they're alive? Do you think uh, uh, Jeremiah is a perfect example in any sort of, of error area where a child has an error, right? Do you think Jeremiah is a very stable person? When you're talking to him, his eyes are just like twitching everywhere constantly, right? He, he's, he's, he's the exact opposite of stable. You know, he's, he has one shoe on half the time I and mean, he's a mess. Children, he's the epitome of, ch of a child. He's not stable at all. Children are not stable, right? They're tossed to and fro. They go back and forth. You know, a babe in Christ, a new Christian, do you know what they do? They're constantly going back and forth. Now, hey, right when you get saved, that's okay. That's fine. That's understandable if you don't know anything, right? You know, if you haven't been saved very long, you would expect the first few years when you're really getting into the Bible, you know, you would expect, hey, I'm, I'm going to move here and there on some doctrine. I'm going to move here and there on some certain, on, on particular subjects and particular teachings in the Bible. I'm figuring things out, right? You would expect that. But there needs to be a point where you grow past that. There needs to be a point where you get past that. You're no longer a child. You're no longer a babe. Where now you become a grown man or grown woman. And you're mature and you're stable. And you're not changing on your doctrine. You're not going to go back and, and relay foundation, you know, the foundation on certain subjects that you have learned. Go back to Hebrews chapter number 6. I want you to see this again. Hebrews chapter number 6 here. And uh, we're going to look at Hebrews 6. And I'm going to show you a comparison that Hebrews 6 is another proof that uh, the, the book of Hebrews and the writings and the themes of the doctrines that are taught they're all taught in the, the Pauline epistles. People want to try to reject Paul being the author of the book of Hebrews. It's ridiculous. It is so... Paul is the author of the book of Hebrews. There's no... The King James Bible translators, which they're not my authority, but they, even in the, the original King James Bible, if you look... And most Bibles now, because the King James Bible translators, will say... The epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. It has been universally accepted until dispensationalism that Paul was the author of the book of Hebrews. At the end of the book of Hebrews, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews references Timothy and says that he's going to be sending them. Who sends Timothy in the Bible, in the New Testament? Who's the only person? There's no one else. There's no exceptions. Paul. Do you know where he's at when he says he's going to do that? Prison. Do you know where he's at in prison? Italy. Do you know where Paul was? Italy. In prison. Sending Timothy. Uh, do you, the, the very last words of the book of Hebrews, the way that it ends, is the same way that all the Pauline epistles end. All of them. And no other epistle ends this way. Every one of them end in this way. Grace be with you all. Amen. That's how all the Pauline epistles end. Every single one of them. Paul, when he writes in his, in his epistles, very often he likens the Christian life unto what? Athletics and sports, right? Do you know what the, the writer of the book of Hebrews does? Multiple times he likens the Christian life unto sports and athletics. You saw what was being taught there in the book of Ephesians, right? And who wrote the book of Ephesians? Paul. You saw he talk about maturing and growing past being a child, right? You need to grow on unto perfection. Well, I want you to look at Hebrews 6 and see that this same concept is taught here. And actually, Paul teaches this elsewhere as well. Uh, but look at Hebrews 6. It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Okay? Well, look at Hebrews 5, the end of Hebrews chapter number 5. Notice what he says here. Look at verse number 12. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And then he says this, And are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
What is he saying that they are right now? They're babies or they're what? They're children, right? And what is he admonishing them to do? To move on unto perfection. To, what, was, what was the writer in Ephesians 4 doing? Saying, hey, you're a child. We need to, from, from henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, right? So he's warning them, you need to stop being a child. You need to stop being a babe. You need to stop, you need to move on from the milk. When we look at, you know, the nutritional uh, schedule of a human being from beginning to end, how that clock works, number one, what do they start out on? Milk. They start out on milk as a child. Right? That's the foundation, right? That's the foundation of the nutritional diet of a human being. That's how it begins, right? He's likening that unto certain doctrines. There are certain doctrines in the Bible that are milk. They're very simple. They're very easy, right? They're easy to understand. Even a babe should be able to understand them. And he, he gives them an admonishment here in verse number 11. He says, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered. Then he goes on and says this, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now isn't that sad? I want to make a quick point and then I'm going to move more so out of the introduction into the sermon. But isn't that sad that there are certain doctrines that are available for you to learn from the Bible? But because you haven't even settled on the teachings of the first principles, you can't even learn those other doctrines. Jesus Christ, before he ascended, when he was speaking to his disciples... He told, them, he told them that he had other things he wanted to teach to them. But when the Holy Ghost comes, the Holy Ghost will teach him. And then he said this, because he says, right now you're not able to bear it. Hitherto you're not able to bear it. What's he saying? There's certain things you can't learn yet. Because first you have to learn your foundation. Can you build a, can you, could, could they build this building, this particular structure? Could they build this without laying the foundation? No. They have to lay the foundation first. You have to have the foundation laid first first, right? Think about a child. Can a child grow if you don't start them out on milk? What if you just, you just decide, my, my child, I'm never feeding milk. Just as soon as they come out of the womb, I'm going to chop up green beans and I'm going to feed them green beans. I'm going to give them some chicken. Is that going to work? You must start with the foundational nutrition for the child, right? That's the foundation. Now, what if you tried to build a building? And you did lay the foundation, right? Somebody came in here and poured this slab, right? You know, this is a slab here. That's what you refer to it as. They come in here and they pour the slab. The, the construction workers, as far as the framers, come in and they start building their walls. They stand their walls up. They got all the walls framed in, right? Then they come in and they set all the trusses, right? Then the drywallers come in and they start drywalling, right? This is the order that, that a building is built in. You know, they, then once they're finished with that, they start painting everything, Right? They paint everything, they do the trim, they lay the floor. What if the foundation guy comes back in here, the concrete guy comes back in here and he says, you know what? We're going to have to redo this foundation. We're going to have to tear this whole foundation up and pour a new foundation. How, what's going to happen to the rest of the building? It's going to be destroyed. It's gone. You're going to have to tear everything. Can you just take out the foundation? Can you just, let's just, we're going to take out just parts of the foundation at a time. You know, and re-pour that, right? You'd have to, you'd end up removing everything is what you'd end up doing. There's no way around that. You'd end up having to take out everything. Re-pour the entire foundation. That's what you'd have to do. These doctrines are doctrines that are essential and they are core to the Christian faith and everything else builds on them. That's why here it says, hey, we have other things we want to teach you. But we can't, seeing you're dull of hearing. What's he mean by that? You can't learn them. That's why Christ said, hey, I can't teach you other things that I want to teach you because you're not, hitherto you're not able to bear it. You have to start with your foundation. You have to begin with your foundation. And a foundation, let me say this, second point, end of the introduction, a foundation has to be strong. A foundation has to be strong. You can't be tossing to and fro in your foundation. The basic doctrines of the Bible, you cannot be going back and revisiting every month. You cannot be going back and revisiting every year and contemplating on whether or not you're right about salvation doctrines. Doctrines that have to do with salvation, right? You can't be going back and just contemplating whether you're right on doctrines about baptism. Something so basic of baptism. 
All of the other doctrines in the Bible build upon the first principles of the faith. They, there are certain doctrines that are core, that are essential. And, and I'm sure everyone understands this. If you've done a lot of studying your Bible, you've noticed over time that all the doctrines are webbed together. If you notice that, hey, you learned something additional you know, in one area, it'll affect another area of your Bible study, of your Bible knowledge. You know, there's been times where I'm stuck in a passage and I can't learn the answer to a particular passage. And I find out that my whole problem wasn't necessarily the doctrine that was being taught in that passage, but another related doctrine that I was just slightly wrong about. Not that I had to, you know, completely change that, but I was just slightly wrong about this other doctrine. And once I tuned that in, that misconception of this other doctrine fixed over here, fixed this problem over here. And then that other passage just made perfect sense, right? We can't be relaying our foundation and being a child. If you are the type of person that's constantly changing what you believe in areas, if you are the, uh, you know, the, the type of person that's constantly having to revisit doctrines in your life and, and re-examine whether or not you're right about these particular teachings in the Bible, there's a problem. If, let's say this, there's a problem if you've been saved for many years and studying the Bible. If you're a new Christian, that's okay. If you haven't been serving God that long, you know, and, and, you're, and you're still a legitimate babe in Christ, and you're on schedule, you know, you go to the doctors and you take your children, and they're like, yeah, you know, they're on par. What is that called? It's proportion, they always tell you. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 their growth is proportionate, right? It's saying that they're growing at the same rate. That's fine if, you're, if your chart shows that you're growing at, at the same proportion the whole time. Growth is proportionate. That's fine. But if you've been saved for many, many years, if you've been studying the Bible for many years, if, you, you know, if you've been taught and you have a good foundation in an area, I want to admonish you this morning that you need to stop going back to the principles of the faith. Simple things in the Bible. You need to stop going back and re-examining whether or not you're right about simple things in the Bible. Go to Hebrews chapter 13 while we're here in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 13. You're going to see that this, Paul admonished them, the, the different Christians that he wrote to all the time about this. This is a big deal. Christians have, have done this forever. All the way back to Paul's time. They've always, you know, uh, 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 maybe not grown correctly. They're just growing very slowly in their Christian walk. Or maybe they, you know, uh, they could just get stuck in this rut where they're just continually questioning basic things in the Bible. Continually questioning whether they're right about very basic things in the Bible. Look at Hebrews chapter number 13. Look at verse number 9. It says this, Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. And then it says, <clears throat> For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Now notice the word established. Established like a foundation, isn't it? It's established. It's saying it's firm. It's not moving. Notice the carried about. What is it? It's talking about like, a, like on a ship, right? Or, or, or carried about with the wind like Ephesians 4, right? Those are the, that's when carried about is used oftentimes in the Bible. Uh, it, it'll be talking about being tossed to and fro like the sea or like a ship in the sea or like the wind throwing you back and forth. Back and forth. You need to be an established, strong Christian. There needs to be doctrines in, in, you know, uh, in your Christian life that you are firm on. And no one's going to come and try to you know, compel you or persuade you that 2 plus 2 actually equals 5. You know, hey, these are core principle doctrines that I'm not budging on, that I know for, for a fact that these doctrines are true. We, we don't go back and we don't question the foundation. The foundation is something you cannot go back and fix. Everything else is based upon it. <clears throat> I want you to go now with me to 1 Peter chapter number 2. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter number 2. I want to talk shortly about how the, the growth, you know, uh, and I mentioned this, I alluded to it there for a moment. I mentioned it briefly, that the growth of a Christian, if someone is a babe, that's, that's perfectly fine. If they're you know, just saved and, like I said, their growth is proportionate, that's fine. You know, milk is necessary. It is necessary. The milk is the foundation of everything else. Look at 1 Peter chapter number 2. Look at verse number 2. We'll read verse number 1 as well. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes... Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And then he goes on, verse number three. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord 
is gracious. So notice there that babes desire the sincere milk of the word. They desire the sincere milk of the word. And you would have noticed as I pointed out in Hebrews 5.12, it talked about the milk of the word and tied it in with the first principles of the oracles of God. It said this, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. So the, the hearer of this particular subject or sermon, what they would need to do is they would need to examine themselves. Like the Bible talks about examining yourself and find out where you are in your Christian walk. Find out where you are in your Christian life. Is your growth proportionate? Where are you? Would you consider yourself a babe in Christ? Would you consider yourself full grown? Where would you say that you are? Are you maybe a, a, a teenager? Where, where are you falling on the Christian, you know, uh, uh, the Christian life, right? The growth chart of a Christian. Where would you consider yourself? And what's most important is, is your growth proportionate? It's okay if you're drinking milk and you should be drinking milk. milk. But... But if you're still at that foundation and you're still questioning that foundation, you need to move past that. So what do you do? Well, it's very simple. You need, you need it's, it's your personal responsibility. And people are, are rebuked for not reading their Bible by Jesus. And there are many admonitions in studying the Bible and learning the Bible. Do you know what you need to do? You need to get into the milk and you need to get it settled. That's what you need to do. You need to get in to the foundational truths of the Bible and you personally need to settle these things. Coming to church and hearing preaching is beneficial, but it's only supplemental. It's only a supplement to what you should be doing in your Christian life. You should be the one. You, you have your own foundation of knowledge in your mind on what the Bible teaches. What you need to do is you need to get the foundation settled. So if you are right now a babe in Christ, you need to make sure that you lay down that foundation firm and that it's not budging and that you are solid on the principles of the faith so that you can start building upon that. That's what I was alluding to a moment ago too. Think about this. How embarrassing is it? How embarrassing is it when you've been saved for 15, 20 years and you know, you know, you're still questioning things that are the principles of the faith. How embarrassing is it, you know, and, and here's the thing, you know, there are, there are a lot of churches in Jacksonville. You can go around and visit a lot of Baptist, independent, fundamental Baptist churches where you walk in and people are saved. And I find it so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing when you walk in and you start speaking to 60, 70 year old men, 80 year old men. And you're talking about very basic subjects and they have no idea what you're talking about. They have no clue. Or you can tell that they're clueless on these areas. They have no idea. Just very basic things about baptism. Things that are very clearly explained in the Bible about baptism. Of what baptism is. What the purpose of baptism is. Basic things about repentance. Maybe a guy that knows for a fact he's saved. He knows he's going to, the, going to heaven, right? Right? But you start talking about the subject of repentance and they become very, you know, confused or they, they start to become a little wishy-washy with their terminology, right? That's one of the things that's the first principles of the faith. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand what repentance is when it comes to the subject of salvation. These are basic things. Baptism is in that list. Baptisms. So you need to understand, you know, what baptisms, the doctrine of baptisms. There are two types of baptisms, really technically three types of baptisms in the Bible. So there's an S on that. You need to know what are the different, what are the three different types of baptisms in the Bible. You need to understand what they are. Obviously you have water baptism. You have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then you have Jesus talking about how he's going to baptize the uh, Pharisees and the ungodly with fire. And he cross-references or, or, or contrasts those two things in Matthew chapter number 3. Right? That's three baptisms that are talked about in the Bible. Right? You, over and over again, you, know, you, you can see the, the baptism being related and a picture of the death, burial, and the resurrection. You know, these are basic things about baptism. You should be able to sit down with a child. You should be able to sit down with someone that is maybe a new Christian and explain these first principles to them. You should have the ability 
to go to Hebrews 6 for an example. Look at the basics of the faith, the foundations of the faith, and you should be able to teach them. Have enough understanding to where you can teach them the foundational truths of Hebrews chapter number 6. So what do you do if you find yourself, hey, I, I have questioned foundational doctrines. Very simple, easy doctrines in the Bible. I have done that. Well, you know what you need to do? You need to study the Bible. Look at verse number 15. It's a very simple answer. You need to go to the Bible yourself personally, take responsibility, and study the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, as human beings, we have a lot of patience with other human beings. We put up with things a lot more, you know, uh, uh, probably than we even should sometimes. We are understanding when people mess up because we mess up. We are understanding when people make mistakes because we make mistakes, right? You know, sometimes we are maybe more sympathetic towards sin than we should be, right? God is not like that. And let me, you know, I said something, I alluded to something like this a couple of weeks ago in a sermon. When you stand before God, He's not a teddy bear and He's not Santa Claus. You're going to die and you're going to stand before God and He's going to be pleased with you or He's not going to be pleased with you. And if you stand before God as a Christian that was saved for 50 or 60 years and you're just standing there but you look like a baby, can you imagine how embarrassing that's going to be? You're just this spiritual three-year-old in your understanding or your learning of the Bible. Do you know how embarrassing that is going to be? It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Do you know what you're going to do? You're going to stand before God and you're going to be ashamed. You're going to be ashamed of what a lousy Christian you were. You're going to be ashamed of what a bad Christian you were and how you were consumed with other things in life and, and you never spent your time on things of, of, of you know, the Bible and, and spiritual things. You're going to stand before Him and you're going to be ashamed that you're, you're going to just be a baby in front of Him. He's going to look at, at you and He's going to see a two-year-old or a three-year-old you know, spiritually when you're, you died when you're 70, 80 years old. And look at all the time that you had. It's a shameful thing to remain a baby Christian. It's, it's, it's embarrassing and it's shameful when you go into a church and maybe you're, and not to be boastful, but I'm sure everyone in here has done this. As a 20-year-old, you've walked into a church and you've talked to a 60, 70, 80-year-old man that hasn't gotten a, a single person saved in his life and cannot even articulate the gospel to you. I mean, how much more foundational can you get? It's embarrassing. I can't tell you how many people that went to the church that I grew up in that have never gotten a soul saved. I love those people. You know, they have you know, other good qualities. But hey, it's time to grow up. It's time to not remain a child. Does it sound like Paul is like wearing kid gloves when he's talking about these things? That he says that we henceforth be no more children. Isn't that kind of, you know, uh, 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 ridiculing them? He talks about, hey, it's the time when you need to be a teacher and you have need that someone teach you again the things which be the first principles of the doctrine of Christ. What's he doing? He's belittling them. He's saying, hey, you should be teaching other people, but do you know what you need? You actually have, you know, you know, what, you know what's going on in your life? You need somebody to teach you. When you've been saved long enough and everything that's been given to you, you should be teaching other people. That's embarrassing. It is. It's embarrassing. So you know the very first thing you need to do? Lay that foundation, finish that milk, and then move on to strong meat. Get the foundation settled. If you have a few doctrines that are foundational, that are very simple doctrines, and you know that they're... I'm not going to list. I'm going to go through some at the end, but I'm not going to list every foundational doctrine. And Hebrews 6 is far from all of the foundational doctrines, right? If, you, if there are doctrines in your mind that you're not 100% sure on, then you need to make sure they're sure before you move on. Because what's going to happen? You build upon that foundation. You build upon that, that rock that you've laid or that you really technically haven't laid. You go and learn other things with a presupposition. You build a wall right here when the, when the foundation's bad underneath of it. And you're building, you know, the wrong information because you have the wrong presupposition. You have the wrong beliefs that it's built on. Because you're interpreting... 
the core essentials of the faith. You learn and understand those like salvation. And you interpret things in light of that. Look at rewards in the Bible. You don't think that you interpret rewards differently than somebody that believes they can lose their salvation or believes that salvation is by works? Do you understand what I'm saying? Totally different. You interpret it totally different. Why? Because we have a totally different rock. We have a totally different foundation. We, we interpret salvation differently. So that causes us to interpret rewards the way that when we, when we you know, uh, start studying rewards. Right? So study to show thyself approved unto God. That's our desires. We want to be approved unto God. We want God to look at us and be satisfied with us and be, a, and, and be approved unto Him. He proves us, right? He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Turn to Acts chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17. Verse number 10, I'll begin with reading verse number 10. And the brethren immediately, immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. And then it says this, These were more noble, this is the Holy Spirit writing, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. So notice, what are they? They're interested in the truth. They desire to hear the truth. They want to grow and learn in God's word. With all readiness of mind. And then it says this. And search the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. A couple of points. Number one. As I said. They're interested in the truth. They're receiving the truth. Right? With all readiness of mind. They're receiving God's word. But not only that. Do they, they, do they just take everything that they hear. And just believe it. Immediately. Like whatever said to them. They just believe whatever said to them. No. It says afterwards. And search the scriptures daily. To see if those things were so. To see whether those things were so. Notice that. They searched the scriptures daily. You know what they did? They took personal responsibility. You have your own personal responsibility to study the Bible. You have your own personal responsibility. Whatever I preach to study the Bible, Paul came in and, hey, Paul had authority within the church, didn't he? The local church, the apostles, right? All, you know, they were at the top. Paul would, would, would found these churches and then he'd go back to them. So he had an authority within these churches. But even when the authority would stand there and preach them, they just believe everything that was said to them? No, they had their own personal responsibility to search the scriptures and see whether those things were so. They had to, that's another thing you can see that they're being contrasted with those in Thessalonica. You know what the Bible says? Wouldn't it be embarrassing to be th someone from uh, uh, the Thessalonica? Thessalonians, the Thessalonians. Wouldn't it be embarrassing to be a Thessalonian? So they're more noble than those in Thessalonica. And, and why? Because they search the scriptures daily. To see. They, number one, they receive the word of God with readiness of mind, right? And then, furthermore, they search the scriptures. That tells me those in Thessalonica, number one, they weren't receiving the word of God with all readiness. They, 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 maybe they weren't that interested in the word of God, right? They're not desiring to hear the truth. They're not desiring to grow. On top of that, they're not studying for themselves. These people wanted to know what the truth was. They're studying and, and searching the scriptures. That's another point. They're doing it daily. You need to be reading your Bible and studying your Bible on a daily basis. Every day. Amen. They're noble. Why? Because they're receiving the word of God and they're, and they're looking they're, look at it. Searching the scriptures daily. Why? To see whether those things are so. That's what you need to do if there are things you are questioning about your foundation. You need to take a personal responsibility. You need to sit down. You need to find out, hey, what are some of these foundational doctrines? What are some of the easier doctrines that I just, I'm having trouble with, right? I need to go back and I need to look up these doctrines and I'm going to study them out and I'm going to make sure I get firm on it. Get, get, have a strong foundation laid so that I can build upon that foundation. So you can move on unto perfection. A person that's constantly questioning their, their, their doctrines and their, their foundation, that person is in stalemate. That person is going to be stagnant. You can't build upon a, 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 a wavering foundation. You can't build upon a weak foundation. You can't build upon that. So you know what you are? You're in stalemate. You're going to, you're going to keep going back and questioning basic things continually. I've, I've met people like that all the time that are just constantly questioning. And they're still not settled. They talk to this person and this person will persuade them. Right? With whatever it is. 
Then they talk to this person and this person pulls them over here. So depending on who they're speaking with, you know, they'll go back and forth on what they believe on these subjects. You need to be strong enough and disciplined in your mind to know what the Bible teaches and then to say, this is what I believe and you're not persuading me out of it. 2 plus 2 equals 4 and I'm not interested and I'm not open-minded in whether or not 2 plus 2 equals 5. I'm not interested in, 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 in you know, uh, questioning my foundation. If you, what if you just sat there and just questioned the, the principles of math, of addition? Are you going to be able to learn algebra? Are you going to be able to build upon that? Right? Once, you know, you're going to be able to learn you know, any calculus? No, you'll never move on under perfection. You'll never be able to grow in the area of mathematics. Right? You have to make sure that your addition is strong. You have to make sure that the foundation of math you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, these things. You have to make sure that that is strong, your foundation is strong. And then from there, you can move on from that point. I'm going to give you some bad reasons that people change their beliefs or change their doctrines. I'm going to give you a few reasons why people will, will change what they believe on particular doctrines. So the overall reason why oftentimes people will change, number one is because like I was mentioning, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's because they're a babe. Obviously, children are, are feeble-minded, right? Uh, that's what it's talking about, someone being a babe in Christ. It's someone that's weak. They're like I was saying just now, they're not disciplined enough to get firm on something. When somebody comes back, they're able to just, whether they know it or not, they're deceiving you out of the truth, and they're tossing you this way. And then you, you, know, you hear something else from somebody else, and maybe they're teaching you the truth, and they toss you this way, right? Because they're not strong enough in their mind they're still a babe, they're still feeble-minded or weak-minded in areas when they need to be stronger in their faith, stronger in their beliefs, right? And the only way you get out of that is by studying and, and, and knowing it better. So you have to take that personal responsibility. Um, secondly, the second reason why is because people have built their foundation upon a man. They've built their foundation upon the, the teachings of a man or a teachings of a person. And I've seen this numerous times in my life, and it's not just the recent events that everybody here relates to. I've seen this happen in diff, all different types of camps where people will build what they believe upon the teachings of a man and not search the scriptures daily for themselves. Hey, Paul came in, and I'm sure a lot of the churches that Paul would go into, there were teachings that Paul would just teach to them, and people received it, but they didn't search the scriptures to see if they were so. And their foundation wasn't really truly in their mind built upon the scriptures. It was really built upon just what Paul was saying. Now, hey, as, you know, number one, that's, that just in general is not good. It, but as long as, as, long as you, you're, you're taught, let me say this, as long as you're taught everything that's right, hey, that's fine then, right? But here's the problem. No man teaches everything correctly. You will never find a man that is right on every single doctrine. Every pastor and every preacher that gets up behind the pulpit is wrong about all different sorts of things. All different types of things. They're going to get up and they're going to preach all different types of things wrong. Whether they know it or not. So if you, if you base your beliefs upon everything that this man teaches, now you have basically just cut off your ability of being right about maybe the things where he is, he is an error in. You're, you, you know, and obviously you're going to be ashamed when you stand before God and, you know, and God knows the, all of the, you know, the thoughts of the heart and He then calls you out on the fact that, hey, you never studied for yourself. You never searched the Scriptures daily. And, you know, and that person obviously is still a babe because you're not going to grow in understanding if you don't know it for yourself. You're just going to be repeating and mimicking the things that they say. All their talking points, right? Whatever, whatever you know, uh, points that he uses every time he talks about that, you're just going to be repeating everything that they say. And I'll tell you something very scary about this. And I've seen this happen uh, two times that I can think of in my life. One time here, as I said, that people here can relate to. What happens is is when you base everything you believe and you haven't studied for yourself uh, on your own, but you base everything you believe upon what a man teaches, someone will come to you eventually or someone may come to you eventually and show you, hey, this is wrong. This person's not right about this. They may not even do it in such a way. You just may understand, hey, that's something so-and-so teaches. And, you know, I believe it because, whether you know this or not, because so-and-so taught it. And you realize then at that point, wow, you know, he's teaching this and he is for sure wrong about that. I've been, 
I've been, you know, taught, you know, taught something that's wrong. Do you know what that person ends up doing? Because they didn't build that foundation themselves and because the scriptures wasn't their foundation, but rather a man was. Because that man is their foundation, instead of the scriptures being their foundation, they start to question the entire foundation everywhere. Now, if they had spent the time on their own studying the Bible for themselves and proving each doctrine, instead of taking his words and just laying that foundation down, then they wouldn't be having to back up and say, well, what, well, is this true? Or is this true? Or is that true? Or is that true? They would have already proved it all for themselves and understood it. Right? So that's totally different than if you have proved everything. Let's say you yourself laid your own foundation. You learned what the Bible teaches on all various and diverse subjects. And you lay down your own foundation. That's totally... It'll be... The, that man's reaction would be totally different than if you went to him and said, hey, you're wrong over here. They'd say, oh, you know what I am. I need to study that out. But the man that never studies the Bible and the man that didn't lay his own foundation, what's he going to go to? He has nowhere to run. He's going to go back and he's going to think about, oh, he's wrong about that, isn't he? So you know what that person can do? Number one, they can just fall out of the faith. They'll just, you know, it just causes their faith to waver and then they just stop going to church you know, they stop, you know, being uh, zealous about the things of God, right? Because then they, they're, just, they're just in this state of confusion. I've seen this happen so many times, so many times. They're in this state of confusion because they never really studied everything out for themselves. When really all they would have had to do is lay their own foundation for themselves and tried those things. If they'd have been trying what that man was, was preaching and teaching, then they could have corrected that when it came in. They would have filtered it and then laid the correct foundation. But the other thing that will happen when, when uh, the, for the, so the first possibility is that you'll just question the faith. The second possibility is that now you go back and you just relay all of the foundation. You, now you just start changing everything that you believe in all different areas of random doctrine. Now, if you've been saved for six, seven, eight years, or you've been, let's say this, you've been serving God, you've been saved and you've been serving God for that amount of time, eight, nine, ten years, and you find out that, man, I was basing everything I believe. How, how, you know, how uh, discouraging would it be like having to go back and recheck the foundation on everything? I'm now, I'm not sure about everything that I was taught. You see the importance of laying your own foundation? Of you yourself in your life laying your own foundation personally on what you believe. Because now you get down the road and then you realize, hey... There's, you know, I was taught something wrong. And then, number one, you have the danger of, of falling out of church and falling out of the Christian life. Number two, that type of person, he's got to go back and check. He's got to do control, quality control on the whole foundation. And what a lot of people end up doing because they found out, hey, this one thing that this guy taught me was wrong, sometimes they just go back and they don't quality control what was laid. They tear up the entire foundation and then they lay a lot of bad foundation uh, in its place and the reason being is because now they have this doubt in their mind about everything they were taught by that man to begin with and then when they lay these other doctrine they have this presupposition in their mind of hey he was wrong about that then I guess he's wrong about this and then they start questioning basics and foundational principles of the faith very simple things that are very easy to understand in the Bible that 10 years down in the Christian life you should already be settled on and have no problem understanding there are things in the Bible that are milk. There are things in the Bible that are very easy to understand. And we don't, when we're 30 years in the Christian life, go back and drink milk again. You know, I'm not going to go back and start, you know, uh, 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 drinking, you know, uh, uh, breast milk this late in my life. It's not going to happen. And I'm not going to go back and start relaying my foundation of my Christian life. That's why it's important to know that you are laying that foundation and someone else is not laying it for you. You're there, you know, uh, 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 monitoring and supervising what's going on when that foundation is being laid, right? You, are, you should be, you know, the one that is, that is quality control checking everything that goes on that foundation. You have to do that. <clears throat> so what people end up doing is they start questioning basic things because of this deceit. They have this now planted in their mind. It's dangerous. It's real dangerous just to believe everything that's taught to you. Then down the road, you just now you have this presupposition 
Everything that I was taught from that person or from that particular source is wrong. Right? And how do you get over something like that? Obviously, you would wish that you would have laid your own foundation to begin with. You would have searched the scriptures and, and made sure that those things were so before you actually put it on, this, on uh, uh, the, the foundation. You actually poured that foundation. I'm going to give you some basic doctrines in the Bible. Obviously, we saw what was there in Hebrews chapter number 6, but I'm going to give you some basic doctrines just in general. Number one, this was meant to, mentioned in the form of, of repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation. You know, I'm not going to go back and relay you know, the foundation of salvation. That's not something I'm going to revisit every year. Like, is it really by grace through faith? I'm pretty sure, but you know, I'm going to spend the afternoon studying that out. There are basic things in the Bible, right? Do you think salvation falls into that category? Of course. I'm not wondering whether eternal security is true. I'm not wondering that. Right? And I'm not going to sit down and allow someone to give me some dissertation and listen to whether or not that's true or not. If you are questioning eternal security, if you are questioning by grace through faith, you know, there's a problem if you're a full-grown Christian, if you should be a full-grown Christian. If you believe you're a full-grown Christian, that's a foundational truth. Um, the Bible... The preservation of God's Word. This is foundational. In, the inspiration and preservation of God's Word is a clear, simple, rudimentary doctrine in the Bible. It's all throughout the Bible. You, you could find it everywhere. In, in the book of Psalms, the book of Isaiah, the book of Matthew, the book of Revelation. I mean, it is everywhere. and It's simple. It's easy to understand. You can compare all the scriptures side by side. You can see so many different things. That every word of God is preserved, that it's pure, you know, God promises repeated. I mean, there are so many different times. This is a simple, easy doctrine. I'm not going to go back and question whether or not the King James Bible, and you see people doing this sometimes, don't you, in their Christian life. I've seen this so many times. People that are King James only, and they start questioning it. This is, a, this is rudimentary. You need to get this figured out. I mean, that's the foundation foundation, right? That is the rock. Christ is the rock, right? And what is Christ? The Word of God. That is what everything is built upon. Right. So that really needs to be the very first thing you spend time on. If you're, if you're not solid on the inspiration and preservation of God's Word, you need to spend the afternoon today getting solid on it. Or after soul winning or something. You need to allot some time and say, hey, I can, you know, you need to be able to teach this and prove this to children. Prove this to other people. Hey, it's very easy. It's a very simple doctrine. You shouldn't be questioning this. And going back and question. If you end up pulling out that foundation, you don't have a foundation. What are you going to build on? Pick one. The NIV, the NASB. Think about that for a minute. That's, you know, pretty wavery. You know, that is the rock. That is the foundation. So you need to make sure that you're solid on the issue of inspiration and preservation of the Bible. And, and solid on the subject of the King James Bible. Amen. Jesus being God. This is a rudimentary doctrine. It's not, it's not up for debate. It's not something that you're going to sit me down and try to speak to me about. These types of things... Do not give ear to these types of things. If, if I go to someone's door, and, and I'm sure you guys have seen me do this, and I knock on the door and I, I start to give them the gospel, and, they, and I can tell that they're trying to like, shh, you, know, you know, turn the tables to where now they're teaching me, I'll always, I'll always cut them off. And I'll say different things, but if it, it starts to become like where they're like, they know that I'm trying to cut them off and not let them, and they do it again, and, and I know that they know, I'll tell them, like, hey, I came to your door to preach to you the gospel. You know, if you want to, you know, I, which I wouldn't listen to them. I've said this to you many times. But if you want to teach me your teachings, you come and knock on my door. Now, I'm not going to tell you where I live, but you come in there and I wouldn't listen to you anyways. But you come and knock on my door. But I'm here to talk to you. I'm not, I didn't come here so that I could learn something from you. Right? I don't want to know about Islam. I'm not interested. Right? I'm not interested if 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's foolish and stupid. It looks like the hurricane's hitting us anyways. Right? That's dumb, okay? I am not interested in whether Muhammad is a true prophet. Right. That, that boat is sailed. I'm not interested in that. That's gone, okay? I'm not going back to my foundation on whether or not the Bible is true. These are things that I'm not up for discussing, period. I'm not going to watch something and consider that. I'm not relaying that foundation. I'm not relaying the foundation of whether Jesus is actually God. Hey, you know, I've been studying and I think... We might be wrong. He's actually, you know, he's Lord, but he's not, 
you know, Jehovah God, He's a divine man. I'm not interested. The Bible is so clear on that subject. It's foundational. It's rudimentary. You need to know that. The, that is a major foundation in the Bible. Understanding first that Jesus is God. That God is your Savior and that Jesus is your Savior. I mean, there are all types of things that you need to build upon that and understand that first. And if you don't understand that first, you can't build on it. There are tons of things that tie in with that. Tons of stuff. And if you don't understand that Jesus is God well, and if you read verses sometimes you're confused about and that cause you to even go back and question that, you need to become more solid on this. You need to study your foundation out and make sure that thing is as smooth as can be. That's what you need to do. You need to go back and lay down the foundation. Church structure. This is something that's been popular lately. I'm not interested in discussing church structure with you and how the church is, is going to run and whether it should be like this democracy or what, you know. I'm not interested in that. I didn't, I didn't you know, I, I've grown in my beliefs on that, but I already knew long before I moved to Faithful Word that the church was supposed to have a pastor and a leader and he was the boss. Amen. I understood that very, very well. I, you know, I've grown and I have more... And you can grow in these things, but there's a difference in relaying the foundation and then learning on it. Yeah, I, you build upon the foundation, you don't go back and tear it, get a backhoe and tear it up. You learn more, but I understood this a long time ago. I, I understood how the church was supposed to run in areas. You know, the tithe. This is confrontational. Now people are going back and questioning whether you should be tithing. That's an easy doctrine. It's taught all throughout the Old Testament. You can, it, is, it is everywhere. You can find it taught before the law, after the law. It's, it's an easy doctrine. It really, truly is an easy doctrine. Before the priesthood was there, people were tithing. The first fruits were brought all the way back to Cain and Abel. God desired the first fruits. That's what the tithe is. And people, people that are going back and questioning this, now they're like trying to make a distinction between the first fruits and the tithe. The tithe is the fruit, first fruits. They're used interchangeable throughout the... When, when God gives the law and the commandments, he's talking about the priests, they're used interchangeable. The book of Proverbs talks about giving the first fruits of your substance. You know, you, the book of Proverbs is, is timeless wisdom that is given. It's just a book of wisdom. You know, the tithe is not up for debate. We should be tithing as Christians. It's a simple, it's a simple doctrine. And I'm not jumping on this train of like these house church people. It's frustrating. I'm not, that's what this is. You know what the house church movement is? All of these people that are jumping on this movement. I don't hate these people, but you have to tell them that because if you get mad at them, they think you hate them and you want to kill them and like all this craziness. The house church movement is, is this, is what it is, where they're trying to compel you to question the foundation right. of easy doctrines. I'm not interested. Hey, buddy, you might be a babe in Christ. You might be still questioning these things, but I have been studying the Bible and saved for, a, I've been saved for a long time, and when I was 21 years old, I started reading my Bible, and I've read my Bible at least three times every year since then. And I spent, I, I memorized scripture, so it's, it's what, nine, almost ten years that I've been faithfully attending every service in a ministry for seven or eight years. I didn't get saved three years ago. I have these things laid out in my life, and I'm not going back because this movement has started questioning all of the foundation. How the church is supposed to be run. Whether every person in the, in the church is, it, what an elder is. Whether every person should be making decisions. What a pastor really is. Whether he's the boss. Whether we should be tithing. All of these stupid things that are simple in the Bible. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in this. And people, you're a bigot. You're closed-minded. I'm not interested in talking to you about whether 2 plus 2 equals 5, fool. I'm not interested. I'm lay, I've laid my foundation... You can say, oh, you're closed-minded. No, I laid my foundation, and according to Hebrews 6, I'm not going to go back and, and lay that foundation again. I'm not going to go back and question whether that's true. There are things that are simple, that are easy. They're the first principles of the doctrine of Christ, and you need to move on from that under perfection. When you stay questioning, you'll never grow. You'll never grow. And a lot of these people, they were disillusioned by what happened because they ultimately had their faith in a man. They were just trusting everything that they were fed. Everything. And then when one part of the foundation was bad, 
It causes people to be scared and to freak out. And before they quality control check the rest of the foundation, they just tear it all up. And then when they go to lay the foundation, they have in the back of their mind all the things they were taught before. And they're like, well, he was wrong about that. Then this must be wrong. This must be wrong. This must be wrong. So you may have to be going back and relay your foundation, but I'm not relaying mine. I'm not just going to question. I'm not a part of this whole house church rebellious movement that is just trying to question everything that is uh, considered an establishment. That's what it comes down to. Anything that is organized, that's an establishment, any sort of organization or any sort of government, they hate it. That's what this is about. Think about it. That's what they do not like. They want things to be in a, in a disarray or disorder. No real rule, no real order. You know, anything that is, that is strict, that, those, that's what they don't like. It's a rebellious spirit. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. You know, that's, that's not something that we're going to do here. I'm going to lay down the foundation of the doctrine of the church as the pastor of the church, and we're not going to be changing every year. We're not going to be being taught. Are there things that I'm going to change what I believe on throughout the, the, the years? Of course. But differentiate in your mind between rudimentary, basic, first principles of doctrines and then other things that are more difficult. You know, I may change my interpretation of, you know, in something in times, right? But I'm not going to be questioning, you know, Matthew 24, 29, whether it truly is after the tribulation. Right, that's a basic, that's, I would consider that a basic doctrine. People can be deceived out of basic doctrines. But that's a basic... After the tribulation of those days, I mean, it, it, it says it there. It's taught in Re Revelation 5 and 6. Compare the passages. That's a pretty simple, easy... Wouldn't you say it? that's easy to understand? That's easy. Now, you can have your whole foundation built, right? This is one of the points I wanted to end on. And have one part of it that's wrong. Because if you would have noticed very closely in Hebrews chapter number 6... It, it, it says in Hebrews chapter number 6, I want to, you, can, you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to turn there quickly. I want, I want you to notice how these different doctrines are different parts. Of, they're a foundation in and of themselves. It says this, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. And it says this, Not laying again the foundation of repentance toward God and faith. And faith I'm sorry, repentance from dead works. I was quoting that from Acts earlier every time I quoted it. But it says, repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So notice the foundation of, and then he words that, right? He tells you found the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Then he says this, of the doctrine of baptism. So notice that is like a foundation in and of itself. So what you can do sometimes is you can lay all of your foundation, the foundation as a whole, which would be all the principles of the doctrines of Christ, the easy doctrines in the Bible. But maybe over here, one of the this area of the foundation which is built upon whatever it may be, whatever doctrine that that foundation is, that can be wrong. That could be wrong. You could have an area of the principal things that you understand and that little small area is wrong. Would to God you'd been studying the whole time. I hope that you would be studying on your own the whole time. When you find out that this is wrong, what you do is you tear that piece up and get rid of it. And then you lay that piece down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just that particular found part of the foundation. You get rid of that part. Right? And you replace that part of the foundation. You know, but that's why every person needs to stop and see, hey, what are, what are some of the foundational truths in the Bible? What are some of the easy things? I'm not going to be able to go through all the easy things. Some of the other ones like creation. That's another one I have written down. That's foundational. God is the creator you know, it's, 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 it's foundational to understand God is the creator and that the, it's a young earth. These are all like Genesis chapter number 1 and 2. Is li it's like, it's like a, a storybook for children. It's super easy. It's meant to be understood. It's basic. It's simple. I'm not going and questioning whether there's a gap between Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 1, 2. I'm not questioning that. That's basic. You're not going to debate with me about that. And it's stupid. It's silly. It is. Amen. That's not questionable. So there are basic things in the Bible. Things that are just plainly stated. Things that are just plainly written out in the Bible. That you could study out and, it's, and you compare all the scriptures and come to an understanding. And you know what you need to do? Spend time and be diligent. Understand those scriptures. 
lay that foundation down and stop revisiting it once you know it's sure, once you know it's right. Don't be a person that's constantly questioning whether or not, because some people, sometimes people, they just get in the mindset or they'll, ha like I said, they'll have something that causes them to question it. They'll get in the mindset where they're just constantly questioning, whether something happens to them, but it just causes them to constantly question the foundations of life. The foundations of, of, and I say life, I'm talking about the Bible, right? Like when the, uh, I'm, I'm recovering from that, right? Like when the, uh, the apostles are told by the angel of the Lord, go preach unto them all the words of this life, right? You know, the Bible, right? All the things about this life that pertain to truth. I'm not questioning that. I'm not questioning these things. Lay down that foundation. Make sure 100% the mixture's right with cement and sand and rock. And then pour it one time. And stop going back to it. If somebody shows you you're wrong for sure, that's different, right? But we shouldn't be, and then you see it. Obviously, you should be thinking about all these doctrines anyways. And if you identify a problem just by, you know, seeing it and understanding it, don't read your Bible blindly. Constantly think about these things, and if there's a problem, it'll pop into your mind. But don't be a person that's always just questioning things just to question things. Just to, just to be, a, you know, just to be different. You know, that's the reason why sometimes people will question doctrine anyways, because that's sometimes the reason why people will change their doctrine, just because they want to be different. To avoid conflict or sometimes to cause it, right? Sometimes people, when the heat is on them, then all of a sudden they're like, you know, well, I believe something different. I don't believe that anymore. You know, like they're like, you know, they're, you know how many preachers have stood up and been like, we need to put all these faggots to death? And then the reporter comes to their door and they're like, you know, I was just in the heat of the moment. And, you know, it's, and they're, what they did right there was change their doctrine. They're saying what I said. And that's really what they believed. You can find them saying it tons of times. Like Jeff Owens is a perfect example of this. Multiple times the guy preached that homos should be put to death. He's the guy that made the famous quote, we need to stop burning flags and start burning fags. And you know what he did now? He issued a public apology after that. He preached that homos need to be put to death multiple times. Multiple times. But now, since the, since the world has put him under fire, it was easy to preach it in the 70s. It was easy to preach it in the 80s. Don't be tossed to and fro by the slight of men. Don't be tossed. To, you build your foundation on this world and it will constantly change. Don't allow external influences to change your foundation. You need to have your own personal responsibility. You need to study and know what the Bible teaches. And you need to make your own mind up. Lay that foundation and stop going back and questioning. Lay it right the first time. Stop going back and questioning whether 2 plus 2 really equals 4. There are core basic things. Is anyone in here interested in someone trying to teach you that salvation is not by grace through faith, that it's by works? So you, everyone would agree there are things in the Bible that we need to not go back and keep questioning. Right? Don't you, wouldn't everyone here agree with the, the fact that we shouldn't question that particular doctrine because you're very firm and solid on it, right? Right? Well, there are a lot of doctrines in the Bible that are very simple as well, just like salvation. A lot of them. You know what you need to do? You need to make sure you're firm and solid on those things as well, just as solid as you are on salvation. I'm sure there are doctrines in your life you need to become more sure on. Make sure that you are sure on the foundations, the easy, simple things in the Bible. I'm going to read this verse and we're going to close. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. I don't know what happened to the rest of that verse. I don't have it, but let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for a solid foundation.